there's a habit that's come about because of the internet, because of who we are as people, and because we have this tendency to do certain things, sometimes we just don't know when to shut up. You know, when you don't know what to say, you say something anyways, and you stick your foot in it, and then you kind of wish you hadn't said it, because it really didn't go over the way you thought it would, or you didn't think about it before you said it. Well, my mother used to say, you know, if you ain't got something nice to say, don't say anything at all. And frankly, I took that to be kind of like what we should be doing as a Christian. You know, there are Christian ministries and Christian people and Christian things and Christian sites and Christian radio and Christian talk shows and all these blogs that want to scream and yellow, 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 really, scream and holler and rant and rave and basically do negative things that are like, you know, warning people supposedly, but really what they're doing is they're, in the Old Testament it's called um, living by their own sparks, you know, they, they strike a spark, you know, they want to create a fire, but they don't have enough wood because you are the wood, so they have to, you know, get the kindling by interesting you by creating some sensational headline that's usually a lie or grossly exaggerated or in some ways sounds right but isn't. So a lot of times what they'll do is that they'll create these headlines to bring in the kindling, you know, which is what you are. When you pay attention to them or visit their sites or click on their banners or do whatever you do, then that's like kindling for them, you know, they strike a spark, oh, oh, and then they get all excited because they keep striking sparks, you know, and they go around striking sparks, but they never start a fire, because that's all they're good for, is striking sparks. They don't have anything to their ministry or their substance. So, a lot of that really doesn't do anybody any good. You see sparks flying everywhere, here, there, you know, and they're all over the place, always telling you about this, that, or the other thing. But they're not building anything. You know, they're always striking sparks, you know, like wanting to start a fire and burn somebody's house down. They're like fire starters, you know, and the Old Testament talks a lot about that. The prophets warned a lot about finger pointing, wagging the tongue, striking sparks, living by their own fires, you know, digging their own pits, you know, falling in them. I mean, I don't know about you, but, you know, sometimes I just don't feel good after reading their pages or listening to their remarks. And, you know, it's becoming more popular, and frankly, I don't want to deal with it, because it's like a little bit of sin really infects everyone. And so when you get involved in that kind of, you know, gossip, false witness, exaggeration, tabloid Christianity, you know, you can call a lot of names. When you get into that, you really don't help anyone with their relationship with God, because what you're doing is you're putting a stumbling block in front of them. You're causing them to waste time on what you're trying to blame someone about, rather than spending the time getting to know Jesus. You see, I have, at different times, things happen in my life that make my health go poor. Like last night. Last night, whatever got inside my system, kind of like, you know, these guys that strike sparks, it got in my system and it made me physically ill, you know, and man, whatever's going on inside my guts, it's like it was going through my guts, you know, just kind of like making my, every inch of my bowel I could feel, and when you're a Crohn's patient, you technically really can, <laughs> you don't know that, but believe me, we know, <laughs> both that got Crohn's understand, so anyways, Whatever got in my system is like, ah, oh, just burning and acid and going through me back and forth and I was up and down and up and down. I tried drinking water and taking acid pills, nothing worked, you know. And it was like, ugh, just poison in my system. And it was like, man, this is like what it feels like when you eat, you know, like bad food or you get, you know, some kind of spoiled food, you know, and you just get, you know, either like something like amoebic dysentery or your body just goes to a flush time where it's like, sick and it just wants to get rid of whatever it is that's making it ill, you know, and it's trying to get rid of it. Well, the body of Christ, likewise, sometimes goes through that with these people that are always kind of like tearing things down and striking sparks. 
It's like poison in the body of Christ, and it's poison in your mind. You know, it'll affect you. It'll make you sick the next day. It'll kind of like make you really nauseated. You know, you just want to. You don't really want to throw up, but you just don't feel good. You know, and I don't know about you, but when I don't feel good, you know, I don't put on phony errors and say, "Oh, I feel great. I'm wonderful. You know, I'm happy camper." No, I just go to my father and I say, "God." I don't feel good. And then I go to my wife and tell her I don't feel good. <laughs> and she hears it over and over and over again because I'm like you. Misery loves company, so I'm going to tell my wife, I don't feel good. And you know what else, honey? I don't feel good. But you know what, honey? I don't feel good. But you know what else? I don't feel good. And you know, I, I play it as humor, even though it drives her crazy. <laughs> and God knows I need to repent sooner or later, one of these days, but I'm a sinner, you know, so I'm, I'm getting there, you know, I'm working on it, but today, I don't feel good, <laughs> and you know what else, I don't feel good, can I do that to you, I don't feel good, but, you know, when you don't feel good, <laughs> get it, <laughs> when you don't feel good, you sure don't want to have some of these people that are all, you know, tearing things down as your comforter, do you, you really don't want to hear what they have to say. You really don't want to pay attention to their bad mouthing people, places, things. You know, because you really know already that it's bad mouthing. I mean, you were told that, what a bad mouth is. You know, it's different than a good mouth. <laughs> it's a bad mouth. And, you know, when people are bad mouthing each other, you know, you just don't really want to be around. You know, I know you get this little sinful kind of tweaking little thing that you go, ooh, what is it? And then you get involved and you go, I didn't know that about that person. Ooh, they're really evil. Then you got this bad idea of someone that if you took the time to research, you'd find out that that's not what they really are because you didn't ask the person. You listen to those that are striking sparks and living by their own fires. Or like running in the camp and saying that there's, you know, a bear or a lion and they flee when there's no lion. You know, I... Proverbs warns about that, people that do that. You know, they're just digging a pit. You know, and if you run with them, you're falling into it, you're going to go right into it, get caught up into it, and then you won't know when the Lord returns or what God wants you to do. And sooner or later, you're going to kind of like wake up one morning and you go, why am I so bitter? And, you know, why is everything so negative? And how come, you know, I think I'm the only Christian there is? And, you know, I don't have any friends, you know. And, I only had these few that I can call my friends, you know, that, you know, they're on the internet, but they're not in real life. Right. You see, that kind of gives away where you're coming from. Because if you're like that in real life, nobody would be around you. So why are you doing that on internet life or cyber life or making your witness a testimony of how bad mouth you are? Don't be that way. Jesus said we had good news, not bad news. The bad news doesn't come with the good news. The good news is, yes, there's hell. Yes, there's heaven. Yes, you can go there. Good news. Yes, you can. And I would rather hear the good news about God than hear somebody else's bad news about themselves. Because really, when they point fingers, they're pointing at themselves. I was uh, kind of in a long discussion with somebody yesterday that was telling me about how it's okay to badmouth and lie about the President of the United States of America at this time because they were claiming that he's Muslim, which is a lie. Everyone knows it's a lie. Everyone's proven it's a lie. Nobody doubts whether or not you know it's a lie. But there's a great portion of people that want to believe it, so they promote it as though they were politicking, you know, like kind of like you know trying to get people to vote in a certain way so they say something that's not true. Well, in politics, they like to call it something else, but in reality, it's a lie. And Christians aren't called to lie about anything. We're supposed to tell the truth. So, whether you be in politics or whether you be in, you know, social media or whether you be in, you know, ministry or whatever you're doing, don't get caught up in the lies, you know, and the deceit. Because this bro that was sharing with me, you know, I was talking to him and he was like, you know, getting upset and all this stuff, you know. And I've watched him, you know, and I've seen him and he's kind of like, man, he's done some really neat things in the Lord, you know. And he's like, 
wow, putting out some really cool material. Then all of a sudden he throws this one bombshell that was like a poison pill that just kind of made a sour taste in your mouth. You just go, ew, that's disgusting. You know, and whenever I see things like that, I comment on them. You know, okay, well, you know, Lord, what do you want me to do? Try to turn it around? And the Lord says, yeah, you know, so I shared with him for a long time. You know, and he was attacking me and then attacking, you know, the ministry and then attacking this and then attacking that and then trying to prove this and then prove that. And I kept saying, look, all you got to do is ask Jesus. All you got to do is talk to Jesus. All you got to do is be with him. All you got to do is follow him. All you got to do is trust in the Lord with all thy heart, lean on thine own understanding, and all your ways acknowledge him, he'll direct your path. All you have to do is if amen, like wisdom, let him ask God who breathe up and give to all men liberally. And then he was saying, well, look, you know, you're supposed to be from this church or from that church, and then, you know, the Paul or Paul's, and, you know, try and lay these little traps out there that, you know, if you step on it, you know, you're going to get trapped because it's going to, you know, snap shut on you. And you're going to say, see, well, these other people say that this is what they believe, and, you know, you're part of them, so you, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm like, no, I'm with Jesus, you know, and this is what Jesus tells me to do. I don't know what he's telling you to do, but I know what he tells me to do because that's what his Holy Spirit does. He tells us what to do. So, if you find yourself, you know, like me today, not feeling good, kind of look at what you've been through and recognize that even when you do spiritual counseling or you do ministry in some way, sometimes besides the spiritual aspect of, you know, passing through a trial or a tribulation, you know, and getting through it, you know, shining forth like a light, you know, and doing the right thing and saying the right thing and being peaceable and malleable and sharing and loving and caring, that the poison that they spew sometimes will get in your system and make you feel kind of blech, you know. And that's the way today I feel, kind of blech. So, <laughs> praise the Lord. Choose, we're told each day, whom you will serve, whether it be the Lord or whether it be the gods of men. And for me, you know, I'd rather choose the good news than the bad news. I'd rather choose speaking words of life than being a bad mouth about anything in life. Because really, our words give us a way of what's in our heart. The entrance of thy words giveth light. This is the message that we have heard of him and declare unto you, that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The Word was God. In Him was life, and life was the light of men. If we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. You were clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. You were sometimes darkness, but now are you in the light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. You were a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Some people take scriptures like that and then they go, well, that means I have to go out and tell other people about what they need to do and what they need to be aware of and what they need to, you know, be afraid of and what they need to and it's like no that's not how God saved you nobody came along and said don't go to church because you know they're like this or that they just said get saved <laughs> go somewhere please you know get to know Jesus and then you had a journey you know that God took you from maybe place to place and you finally wound up where you're at but the point is is when the light has come you know quit talking about darkness you don't need to worry about darkness when you're in the light darkness flees you don't have to say anything you don't have to do anything. You don't have to be anything. What you are being in Jesus is light. So whenever you walk into a room, the room's filled with light. You don't have to say a word. It just manifests itself. And that's how God reveals how he deals with darkness. He doesn't come up and say, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, or I do this in the name of Jesus. No, he just says, look, you know, go, do, be, exist, live, enjoy, praise, rejoice. I've got it covered. You don't. I'm the Son of God. You're becoming one. I'm the light. And if I'm in the light, as my Father gave me to be the light of the world, then you, if you're in me, are the light shining in the darkness. Don't try to identify the darkness. The world is dark. Everything in it 
So don't pick out parts and choose and pick and please and do whatever thing you think you sneeze. But please me in all of these things that you do and you'll find that if you love as I loved, if you are in the light as I am in the light, if you are peaceful as I am peaceful, there's nothing more powerful than one flickering flame in the midst of a darkened room that's a candle. But you put that candle in the middle of a room of thousands of lights, then it's like they're out looking for darkness so that they could look brighter. You don't need to look for darkness. You just need to go out where people are in the dark so that you will be obvious and you don't need to say anything. You just need to be the light because people will ask you. Oh. Whenever you don't feel good, for whatever reason, never try to put on you know, a good front or a good face or whatever. Just go to the place of your father. Who literally is called your daddy, so to speak. He's called Abba, you know, that we read about. And that actually means exactly what it says, you know. Abba is like daddy. It's kind of like a gentle way of talking and communicating. Kind of a, a tender like nickname, like you were given, I'm sure, by maybe your father or your mother. You know, and if you didn't have one, well, maybe your friends gave you a nickname. <laughs> maybe your crib, hey, your crib gave you a word, you know, and they called you this, called you that, you know. <laughs> no, that's not exactly the same. It's a tone of endearment. It's a intimacy. It's a relating the fact that you have a personal relationship with your father. And sometimes when you don't realize it, you don't have to be so holy when you don't feel good. But you can just come to your God, who is your father, and just say, I don't feel good, Daddy. Help me. And it's all you need to do. It's not about your holiness. It's about his wholeness completed in you.